In the Gospel today, our blessed Savior tells us, Other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them also I shall bring, and they shall hear my voice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When I was in high school, a seminarian in Detroit, I used to go on Sundays to the Latin Mass at a little Italian church in downtown Detroit, and I got to know some people who would give me a ride, and I'd walk down the street, and I would meet them at a certain corner by the expressway, and they would pick me up. Well, it was a good introduction to what the world calls the traditional movement, what we know as the Catholics who are left, because they were a carload of characters. And probably one of the most colorful was an old Italian lady. Her name was Marie Adamo, and she introduced me to the wonders of the mystical city of God, the Venerable Mary of Agrida. She also had a, a practice, much to my chagrin at that time, I'll admit now, instead of giving a tip, we, of course, naturally you'd go out to breakfast after Sunday Mass, instead of giving a tip, she would leave a green scapular on the table. And she would be all the time giving out green scapulars to attendants at stores and back then they used to pump gas, actually, at a gas station. Now, as a high schooler, that embarrassed me, but now I realize that she was sharing the greatest possible riches with all of these people whom she would meet perhaps only once in her life. And I thought of old Marie Adamo, uh, Easter Sunday, Pete Gable told me a story after the 11.30. He was on his way to church Easter Sunday morning, and he stopped at Thornton's gas station down the street on 747, and he got talking to the man who was the attendant. He told him in turn that a lady had come earlier that morning with license plates from Rhode Island. And he got talking to her and asked her what brings what brought her out. Easter Sunday, all the way from Rhode Island. She said, why, to go to Mass. And he said, well, don't you have Catholic churches in Rhode Island? And she said, no, we don't. And then Pete started to explain a little bit himself about the differences, the Vatican Council, the ecumenical movement, the watering down of our faith, supposedly to draw others into the Catholic church and the gas station man allowed as to how something like that wasn't right and, and that would never work. And then he mentioned to Pete, the man did, that this lady, Mrs. Givens is her name if I'm not mistaken, this lady had given him a green scapular, which she had, uh, he had he, then he showed it to him. And then she said, he said to, she also gave me a rosary. And then he said, I take this as a sign from God. I'm not a Catholic, he said, but I'm going to say the rosary. Isn't that a wonderful tale for Good Shepherd Sunday? Our Blessed Mother, the Mother of the Divine Shepherd, is always going about to gather up some stray sheep and get them back to her son's sheepfold. Our Blessed Lady is truly, under all of her titles, a pilgrim virgin. Think of this as we honor our mother of good counsel today. Our lady is always reenacting the mystery of the visitation. She's a traveling blessed mother seeking sheep to save souls to get to heaven for her son. Someone gave the mother of good counsel to us a few years ago and how grateful we are, how much Our Lady has given us ever since we have honored her under this title. And I thought that I would tell you today about the gift that the Blessed Mother of the Divine Shepherd has for each one of us. It is a green gift, but it's not ecological. It is theological. It is not for earth, it is for heaven. We're not talking about carbon footprints, but the footprints of the Good Shepherd over all the face of the earth to seek the souls that are lost. 
And in this devotion, it's not required that you should get a picture framed and hang it in an honorable place in your home, but rather you just get a hold of a little postage stamp size, well, it's a pledge card, really, from Mary to us. Our participation at this late date in the work of the Good Shepherd seeking his stray sheep, a little green badge, half a scapular, if you will, carried in the wallet or worn with your other medals and devotions, and you can hide it in the homes or even in the clothing of the recalcitrant who wouldn't use it themselves, and we call it the green scapular. I think most Catholics are familiar with it. This is the scapular you use for conversion. And the brown we wear as our sign of consecration to Mary's Immaculate Heart. The story of it is a marvelous one, and it starts near Lourdes a few decades, maybe 20 years or so before Bernadette Souberu was born, but in the same region of France, a young lady from a well-to-do family who is orphaned at a young age, Justine Bisquebaru is her name, and she is raised by an aunt, and the aunt gives her permission to uh, enter the Daughters of Charity, the Order of St. Vincent de Paul, you know, the nuns that used to wear the big coronets of starched linen. And she, later on in life, would become a teacher first, and then a wonderful nurse in the Crimean War, so much so that Florence Nightingale admired her and wanted to imitate her. But she had a secret whereby she could nurse not only bodies, but souls. And this is how the secret started. She, too, went to the Rue de Bac, the famous convent in Paris for her novitiate. And there, whilst she was at prayer, January the 28th, 1840, the Mother of God appeared to her, so beautiful. She didn't have a veil on her head, and her heart was emitting beautiful rays, heavenly light. That same vision was repeated several times that year, but on Our Lady's birthday, she appeared to her holding in one hand her heart all ablaze with rays more dazzling than the rays of the sun, as transparent as crystal. And in the other hand, Our Lady held out the green scapular with a little prayer around it, Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then she was given to understand, that's how these heavenly locutions work, that This scapular would be the means for the conversion of infidels, especially, to procure for them a good death, and that copies should be made and distributed, this is important, with confidence, especially infidels. In preparing this sermon, I was struck by that. I think that the green scapular is the other half of the story of the mother of good counsel. Remember how Our Lady up took her son and upped and left Albania when the Muslims were on their way. They weren't sticking around to see what would happen next. And Our Lady installed herself in Italy, not too far from Rome. How God took the holy house of Nazareth, where the incarnation took place, and transported that too from the holy land, which had fallen into the Muslim power, and put it too in the holy land of Italy. But I'm thinking the Blessed Mother would never leave her children, even her infidel children, without help. So what does she do? In 1840, she gives a green scapular for their conversion. And in 1917, where does she choose to appear? At a little town in Portugal with a Muslim name. You say Fatima, and a Muslim listens. That's the name of the daughter of the prophet of their wretched sect. But remember that the poor benighted followers of this false religion have a certain devotion 
to Our Lady and that they believe in her immaculate conception, which is wondrous beyond all telling. It must be that they are meant to be converted by the Mother of God. Well, back to the story. There were the usual delays, and our Blessed Lady is patient, but sooner or later she came and she wanted to know what was going on and what was taking so long because she was eager to get this wonderful sacramental distributed. Father Aladel, the same one who worked with the miraculous medal of St. Catherine La Bore, was in charge, and in due time it was approved and passed out, and the Pope in Rome, Pius IX, twice gave it his blessing. The particular power of this little half scapular, the green scapular, is to bring wandering sheep back. But not only infidels, but heretics, schismatics, Catholics who haven't done their Easter duty, and those who have fallen away from church. There, there are two parts then to the program of the green scapular. You use it, carry it with you at all times, easiest as your wallet, or else put it with your brown scapular. And then you give it to those who are in need of God's grace. If they cannot or will not take it from you, why then you hide it someplace as best you may. And then the second part of it is that somebody must say the prayer each day. You say the prayer once a day for yourself, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Pray for us now in the hour of our death. Amen. And then for anyone to whom you've given it, say that little prayer for them each day, won't you? But remember, it's important because this is a scapular that comes from the heart of God, the sacred heart, through his mother's immaculate heart. You've got to do it with confidence. The rays that, uh, you know, that this nun saw, Sister Justine, she says, stand the rays of light from Mary's heart. They stand for confidence. Your prayer will be heard in proportion to the degree of your confidence as you pray. So as you use the green scapular, frequently say, Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place my trust in thee, or my mother, my confidence. Little prayers like that, very important. So carry it, wear it yourself, then have some extra. Keep some in your pocket. Probably the easiest thing is keep some in the car. And when you get talking to somebody, you don't need to sit them down for a sermon or a catechism lesson. You could just say something to the effect of, look, it's been nice meeting you or nice talking to you. Here's something I would like to give you. It's a gift from God's mother, the Virgin Mary. When it's rough for you, ask Mary for help. Here's a little prayer, and you, and you show them the prayer. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then say, I'm going to pray for you every day. And then with a smile, you may take your leave. Try to keep track, though, of those to whom you've given the scapular so you may fulfill your promise of saying that little prayer for them each day. Remember, St. James told us just yesterday in the epistle for the Greater Litany's Mass, if you convert anyone from the error of his ways, you will save your own soul from death, and you will cover a multitude of sins. What a wonderful promise that is to us. And St. Dennis the Areopagite writes, Of all divine things, the most godlike is to cooperate with God in the conversion of sinners. And it is so simple. God wants that pagan you'll meet once in your life at Walmart. God wants the Protestant next door who sends over the cookies. God wants that modestly dressed Muslim family new in your neighborhood whose presence has troubled you so. And the nice Jewish lady too. God wants all of them to be converted and to be saved. Oh, and don't forget your husband or your wife or your children or your grandchildren and your cousins and your uncles and your aunts. God wants them, too, for his heart, through his mother's heart. The pledge and the promise is not just for others. It is also for yourself. 
the devil has no power over anyone who makes or wears or spreads the green scapular of Mary's Immaculate Heart. A few years ago, I came across and was charmed by a, a, a song on a CD of, uh, of all things, bluegrass gospel music. And uh, one of the songs has this charming refrain, which I think of ever so often. This, this, the refrain is, don't you want to be a shepherd for the good God Almighty, for the good God Almighty, for the good God Almighty? Don't you want to be a shepherd for the good God Almighty? Don't you want to go to heaven when you die? Don't you? God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.